Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. I am going to teach you a lesson. Be my slave or I'll wreck your life. Today we bring the story of a wife who threatened her husband of divorce to keep him on a leash. Dear subscribers, We have crossed 1700 subscribers and are racing towards our first 2000 subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for notifications for our latest story. Share a like if you like this story. Let's start with the story. Hi, I'm Ted. At 44, I find myself knee-deep in the world of engineering, orchestrating the setup of new factories and ensuring the seamless functioning of machines. My job demands my complete dedication because even the slightest oversight could translate into significant financial losses. In my personal life, I was married to Kathy, my high school sweetheart. We tied the knot at the age of 25, and while I was immersed in the dynamic challenges of my career, Kathy chose to stay at home and manage our household. I made it a point to pamper her, making sure her needs were met. We went on vacations, and I occasionally showered her with gifts. In bed I ensured that all fantasies were catered to. So, you see, there was nothing to complain. The only problem, my mother-in-law. I never liked her, never in my life did I like her. I always had this repulsive feeling being near her. She was like the Brie Larson and Rachel Zegler fused to create a new form of a devil woman. She was the epitome of self-entitlement and arrogance. My father-in-law divorced her after 30 years of marriage and at my wedding told me to stay clear of her. She was bad new with makeup. So, heading to his advice, I always ensured that I keep Kathy and me away from her. Kathy, however, was close to her. At Kathy's 35th birthday, she gifted her a new car. On her 36th birthday, she gifted her a diamond bracelet. As much I want to gift expensive gifts to my wife, I cannot compete with my mother-in-law. I did feel let down and at times I do feel small and feel if I can do more. My father-in-law is a great man, at times like these he always told me, Son, that car or that bracelet ain't going to put an orgasm in your wife. So, go be a man, ignore these superficial gifts, and go pump me daughter. He always used to make me laugh. I lost my parents a few years ago and he was more or less my father figure. Things were fine but it was about to get worse. Kathy told me that her mother is coming to spend a week with us. I was terrified. For the next one week, I tried my best to be the nice son-in-law, but nothing seems to please my mother-in-law, Karen. She had to find flaws in everything. Why do you drive a cheap car? Why do you wear cheap clothes? Why do you not have made? Kathy was supportive towards me when we were in bed at night. She said she knows that Karen can be a bit pushy at times. I was pleased and then proceeded to give her some nice intimate session. Once Karen had left, I observed that Kathy started to show signs of her turning into her mother. She complained at times at the choice of restaurant that I took her to. She complained at the gifts I gave. I thought it could be due to her getting older and I know just as cars, as women age, they get a bit cranky. Also, you need to pump more gas. So, whenever she complained, that night I pumped her a bit extra, just for good measure. It worked for a while. A few months continued and her complaining had now increased despite more pumping. She had stared to behave like the arrogant Disney princess. There were times when I was at office and she wanted me to talk to her about her day. My arguments that we will talk once I am at home were dismissed with you don't love me anymore and I am your wife, I should be your first priority. One fine day after answering the 38th phone call within a day, I switched off my phone. I came home and told her that she needs to understand that my job puts food on the table and funds all her fantasies and her lifestyle. 
If that is disturbed, all her fantasies and luxury will be disturbed. She heard me silently and I asked her if I am clear. She nodded her head in agreement. That evening just to ensure that she goes to bed in a happy mood, I took her out for dinner and yes, pumped her to her satisfaction. She slept like a baby. Speaking of babies. We don't have any yet. I wanted them but Kathy suggested that she will delay it till she is 38. I explained that it would be too late and could be bad on her body. She declined and we gave that topic rest. Kathy did not change a lot. Her complaining had now increased. She now had started to threaten that she will go to her mother's place to punish me. I rebuffed her as I did not know what is wrong with her. One day once I was home, there was no dinner. I asked Kathy, where is dinner? She said that she forgot to make. I did not believe her and asked her what does she want. This is not typical of her. She got angry and said don't expect me to be your slave. I was having none of it. I went out alone and had dinner alone at McDonald's. I called my father-in-law to discuss and he asked me to come and meet him. I met him a day later. He told me that the apple does not fall far from the tree. He suspects that Karen is polluting Kathy's mind and I need to have a clear conversation with Kathy. I went home and had a discussion with Kathy. I asked her what is wrong and why is she behaving like her mother, always complaining. Instead of having a discussion, she blasted at me with anger and at 10 p.m. at night she left for her mother's place. I did not bother to call her as I did not feel that I was in the wrong. I do not want to call her and make her believe that she can get away with such antics. I stood my ground. Two days later, she returned with the mother in tow. They both blasted me for not calling her and not bothering to check for her safety. I did feel bad that I should have at least checked that she has reached her destination safely. I did not apologize but I said that I will take care of her. This incident did make me realize that Karen was pulling some strings here. A day later I asked Kathy to come for therapy with me and let's try and work on our marriage. She declined. I told her that her actions were hurtful and were causing a lot of tension in the house. I was shocked by her response. She shot back saying, if I am such a pain, why don't you go and divorce me? I was stunned. She got close to me and said, yes, I know you can't. Well, she just broke my heart. That night, like always she expected that I will give her some nice action but I just rolled over and slept. She did try to wake me up but I acted that I was asleep. She huffed and puffed but then gave up and went to sleep. After a few minutes, I found that she was not in her bed. I followed to the other room, I found her on phone and I could sense that she was talking to her mother. That old witch. I went back to sleep and did not speak to Kathy in the morning and quietly went to my office. In the evening, I did not speak to her and did not have dinner with her. I hope that my silent treatment will do some damage to her ego. In the morning I found Kathy packing her bags. I gave a questioning look, she informed me that she is going to her mother's place for three days. I did not say a word, just nodded. A day later I got a call from my father-in-law and he asked me to check Kathy's Facebook account. There she had uploaded a video. So, these are papers for the divorce, and that's very sad. I don't understand how eight years of trying my best to love somebody and fight for them and put up with so much abuse can just be wiped out with little papers. It's not easy and as much as I know that this needs to happen. It still hurts, cause I never wanted this. I actually did love him and I know you how can you love somebody that does those things to you.
I don't know, I don't know why, maybe I see brokenness of people and I know that we can all be better people, and heal if we want. I'm sad because this this is the dreams that I had for us as a family and as husband and wife and these little pieces of paper little flimsy pieces of paper can break and end something that's so strong in somebody's heart. It's hard, I'll get through but I'm sharing my journey with you guys. Every part of it, just so you know that you're not alone and you guys make me feel not alone. That was indeed strange and shocking. For starters I am not an abuser, I have given you so much, yet you accuse me of wrecking our marriage. I got a lot of calls from common friends and they all somewhat accused and bashed me for what Kathy had stated in her video. Some of them did not believe it and they just asked what is going on. I was tried of explaining and just shut down everyone around me. I even faced some flack at work as some colleagues saw that video. I was called by the president of the company for the matter of abuse on the video. I tried my best to explain but he asked me that I should take care of matters at home and take a leave of absence for the next 15 days. I just one day my reputation and my life were almost shattered. Kathy now needs to understand that if you play you have to pay. I kept checking her Facebook account and soon found another video. I know that this is going to be a process for me, ups and downs, and I'm sure you know why probably, like Kathy, smile like get over it. You know, but this is my page to heal and to be brutally honest about every piece of this journey. So, I barely slept last night, I've got a migraine my heart's broken, and, so much. Me wishes that he'd be like, I'll change, I'll fix this I love you I'm sorry for all the things I said, you know you never deserved it, I'll never say that again, I'll pay attention to you, I'll communicate with you, I'll lose my anger. It's not going to change but, I guess I am. Somebody that will always have hope, because not always. Have hope until the divorce is done. I'll always have hope that things could change. I guess that's just me being stupid. I'm sure many of you would say or maybe, it's just me trying to see the good in everybody. I don't know what it is. I'm not weak. I did get the divorce papers. I called my father-in-law. He gave me a number for the same lawyer who took care of his divorce met him in person. The lawyer asked me, from now on record every phone call and record every interaction with Kathy. This is something they missed with my father-in-law's time. So, I put a recording app on my phone and put some cameras in and outside my home. Three days later Kathy called and asked, did you learn your lesson? I was shocked at the arrogance and was seething with anger. She said that she is ready to come back and remove the video if I am ready to change for her. I asked what change does she want. She was silent for a sec and said that you will hand over your monthly salary to me and I will give you monthly allowance and I will run the house. I knew she was being coached to speak. The mother and daughter duo want to make me a slave. I hung up. A day later someone asked her on Facebook if her husband is actually beating her and is abusive. Her response was something that she would regret later. Someone asked to hear my husband's side, so let me tell you my husband's side. Well he loved me and gave me everything he had, did everything in the world for me and you know what, I have to tell you though actually to his credit he did do so much for me. Except show me love and respect and attention and hold me and kiss me, and look at me and communicate with me, and try to have conflict resolution, he did everything in the world that money could do or he could physically do, but emotionally he's been gone since last two months. I downloaded the video and sent to my company's president. He sent me a thumbs up and asked to join after the 15 days paid vacation. 
I was happy, but Kathy still had to learn her lesson. I did not answer any of her phone calls. As the date for the first divorce hearing came close, the phone calls increased. I also got a lot of calls from Karen as well. I did not answer. So, finally we got to the divorce hearing and the judge asked Kathy to explain her situation, to which she stated that I was abusive. The judge asked about the incidents to which Kathy did not have a lot to highlight. The judge asked if she was being abused why did she never call the cops or complain anywhere. She had no answer. She then stated that I do not take care of her needs to which my lawyer presented the bills to every gift she had received. The judge, they asked me if I wanted a divorce. I said yes. He asked what is my issue with the marriage. I explained that my wife has been hell-bent to destroy my livelihood and my reputation and I do not see any reason for me to reconcile with her. She has accused me of things that I have never done and even gone on social media to post all sorts of lies on my name. I can no longer trust her commitment towards our relationship. I even handed the appointment slip for therapy session that I had booked for both of us which Kathy had declined. So, I do not see any effort or any commitment for this relationship. The judge asked for both of you to attend therapy and gave a date for the next hearing. The therapy sessions started and Kathy, to my surprise, did not attend the first three sessions and was late on the next two sessions. Months later when the final hearing came up, the judge went through the report and handed us our divorce. Kathy screamed and said that it was not supposed to be like this. I was not supposed to be divorced. She screamed at her mother you said that the court will come in my favor. What have I done? This is not supposed to happen. She was asked to be quiet but she kept screaming and even hurled some choice words at her mother. My father-in-law who was also present at the court came to the rescue and took Kathy out of the court. Outside he hugged her and told her I had always remind you to keep your marriage away from your mother you took orders from a person who failed her own marriage and now you have wrecked your marriage as well. I slipped out of the court and I know I have to pay a monthly alimony and I am still fine with that. My father-in-law called me a few days later. I went to meet him. He said that he is sorry for what has happened and asked if things will remain cool between us. He always saw me as his son and wants to keep it that way. I hugged him and said that it will remain as it is. I had blocked Kathy and her mother from all contacts. Friends who stood by me remained my friends. The ones who did not side with me are no longer my friends. I did get married again but this time I married an Italian woman, yep, I did become a passport bro. I am proud it. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.